And the reason you're playing a losing hand is because this is a competition between economic considerations and security considerations. The basic mindset of people in the West is that you can punish the Russians economically and they'll throw their hands up. My argument is when security considerations are at stake, when core strategic interests are at stake, and there's no question, ladies and gentlemen, in Russia's case, this is a core strategic interest, countries will suffer enormously before they throw their hands up. Right? So you can inflict a lot of pain on the Russians, and they're not going to quit. And they're not going to quit because Ukraine matters to them. And by the way, Ukraine doesn't matter to us. You understand there's nobody calling for us to fight in Ukraine. Even John McCain, who up until recently has never seen a war he didn't want to fight, right, is not calling for using military force in Ukraine. What John McCain is saying is, not, is that Ukraine is not a vital strategic interest for the West. That's what he's saying. It is a vital strategic interest for the Russians. They've made that perfectly clear, and not just Putin. So in terms of the balance of resolve, it's all on their side. And I showed you that slide up there that depicted how much economic leverage the Russians have because of all that natural gas going westward. So we're playing a losing hand here. But let's assume that I'm wrong. Let's assume that we're playing a winning hand and that we are capable of backing Putin into a corner. And we're getting close to pushing him off a cliff. Is this good? You're talking about a country that's got thousands of nuclear weapons. And the only circumstance, really, under which states use nuclear weapons is when they're desperate, when they think their survival is at stake. So what you're talking about is putting Putin in a situation where he's desperate. And if you go home and Google Putin and nuclear brinksmanship, you'll be reading all the articles that come up for the next two years, right? Because he's making it clear that you're fooling around with his core strategic interests. And again, he's got thousands of nuclear weapons. So you're putting yourself in a position, right? you're putting yourself in a position where you're willing to risk a possible nuclear war over a piece of real estate, Ukraine, that is, a, that is not of vital strategic interest to the United States. Again, it's not of vital strategic interest to us. By the way, and this will be my final point on this, what's truly amazing about all of this is that we were talking about incorporating Ukraine into NATO when we have now acknowledged by not taking military action over Ukraine that it's not a vital strategic interest. You understand that when you incorporate Ukraine into NATO, you're giving them an Article 5 guarantee, which says you'll come to their defense if they're attacked. You only give Article 5 guarantees to countries that are of vital strategic interest, like Germany during the Cold War. What were we doing? Giving an Article 5, thinking about giving an Article 5 guarantee to a country that's not a vital strategic interest. It just shows you how discombobulated American foreign policy is these days. And of course, the Ukraine crisis is just one of many messes that we've made. As you know, we have the Midas touch in reverse. There's nothing that we do that doesn't go south. Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Ukraine, I could go on. So the point I'm making to you is I do not think that this is going to work. But if it does.